I'm John Seaman. I'm here at Road America Racetrack with Kerry Kautzer and Robert Ingram. This is the weekend of July 19th to 22nd, 2018. The WeatherTech International Challenge with Brian Redman, presented by Hawk, is one of the largest vintage racing events in the country, featuring over 400 cars. The historic Can-Am race is one of the feature races. An impressive field of Can-Am cars will celebrate the Can-Am's 52nd anniversary this year. I'm with Dan Davies, and he is the chairman of the historic Can-Am series. Dan, would you give us some information about the Can-Am series and this weekend? Well, of course. You know, we've been coming to Road America now for, uh, well, since 92. It's the driver's favorite Can-Am circuit. And uh, we try to do two, maybe three Can-Am features at vintage races every year. Uh, Road America is always a favorite. But we also uh, have done Road Atlanta, we've done Laguna Seca, occasionally Watkins Glen. But again and again, the guys like coming here. So the Can-Am Association uh, really salutes those great unlimited cars that ran from 1966 through 74. It was when excess was barely adequate. And um, it was also a time when innovation in racing was very special. Aerodynamics? Uh, aerodynamics came along, the very start of ground effects, um, composite construction. Um, there were advances in tire technology. Uh, the tire companies didn't have tire dynamometers before Can-Am, so they learned about the technology of downforce and its effect on tires. So um, it was a very unique time and, and of course great drivers. Denny Hume, Bruce McLaren, um, AJ Foyt occasionally and Reddy and of course Dan Gurney, the fans yes. favorite, um, John Surtees and Jim Hall and his magic yes. chaparrales. So it was a great time for innovation, great drivers and really great races. When we ask the drivers their favorite circuit, uh, Road America tops the list. There will also be a historic Trans Am feature for muscle cars, and a Formula 5000 anniversary will take place this weekend. On Friday evening, there will be a race car concourse in Elkhart Lake. On Saturday night, there will be a sports car concourse for non-racing cars that will also be judged. I'm with Craig Bennett, and he drives the DN4 Shadow. Give us more information about that wonderful, fabulous, fast K&M car. Yeah, it's it was a 1974 Shadow driven by Jackie Oliver. Um, it won four of the five races in the 1974 season uh, and took the championship that year. So it's a championship winning car. What are some of the specifications for the drivetrain engine? Uh, it's got a 535 cubic inch Chevy engine, uh, right about 900 horsepower. It's got a Hewland four-speed gearbox, and uh, it's got 16 inch wide rear tires and, and 10 inch wide front tires. So it's a uh, this Road America track then is uh, the car is well suited for Road America. It it loves it here. I mean, it, it was uh, back in the day. It was as, it was almost as fast as the 91730s. Um, it's got a lot of downforce, and uh, you know every every year back in Can-Am, every year the technology and the engineering got better and better, so the cars went faster and faster. What's uh, what's your favorite corner here at Road America? Ooh, I like uh, 
I really like turn one. Uh, you, uh, I like turn one because it's it's a lot faster than you th- think you can go through it, and uh, it's really gives you a really good feel uh, when you get it right. You, when you get it right, you know it. Yeah. You have some pretty good competition here this weekend. How do you uh, feel about that? Yeah, well, well, my brother's got his Shadow DN2, and he's running very fast. Um, it's his first time out with the car, but he's running very quick with it. And then Claude Millette has the other DN4 Shadow, and he's, he's uh, running very fast. He's been running 203s, uh, which is extremely fast. Uh, you had practice this morning. Uh, what kind of times are you running? 201. <laughs> yeah, we're, we, it, it's nice to have Claude out there. A couple of years ago, we had the 50th reunion of Can Am. I remember that quite a bit because uh, I was in a wheelchair. That was that was the year I was a, a very very bad accident um, at Road Atlanta early, earlier that year that had left me in a coma for 11 days, and uh, so I was in a wheelchair for that event. Um, Probably shouldn't even have been here, but my brother drove the car, and he ended up finishing second. And then we went on to Laguna with my brother driving the car, and he won there. So it was my memories are awesome. They are bad on on one respect, but they were awesome because our cars finished first, second, and third at both events. It's hard not to have a great weekend here, even if the cars are having a little difficulty. It's still a still a great place to run. It's a perfect track for the Can-Am cars, and the crowd is a lot of fun.
I'm with Philip Lewis, and we're in the Formula 5000 pits. Uh, this is an interesting car and has some interesting history. Philip, tell us about this car. This car is the Matic A50, built by Australian race driver and engineer Frank Matic in the early 70s. He wanted to build a car that was better than his M10 McLaren, and this was the car. This is chassis number four of six that were built. Uh, chassis one won the Australian Grand Prix with Frank, Frank at the wheel in the very first race that he raced the car. It was a very successful race car. All of the cars that ran were very successful. And both Frank and Johnny Walker, who owned this car, raced in 73 in the Formula 5000 LNM series in America. So this car is returning to America 50 years later. <laughs> uh, what are the specs on the engine? Formula 5000 is uh, all five liter engines. This car is a Repco Holden. Holden is uh, the Australian G General Motors subsidiary. But the top end was done by Repco. And uh, Repco were, of course, the engine builders for Jack Brabham, the famous Repco Brabham Formula One cars. And um, they branched out into the five liter as well. And the Repco Holden um, was a popular engine. It wasn't as powerful as the Chevs, but it was lighter. So it was a bit of a trade-off um, with the Repco top end. It was a successful engine. Now, how do the Formula 5000 cars go around Road America? Well, this is like a home track for us. Uh, um, this is my fourth trip here, and I keep planning to come back every year. This is, this is a place you want to race a Formula 5000. They're big, they're fast, there's a lot of power, and this is a, this is a power track. There are four straights here, um, and we get moving. Uh, my car is not running too well today, but uh, we pull 169 miles an hour at, at uh, the end of uh, down towards five, and at the end of the main straight, uh, a bit slower today. The weather not being so good, and the track very green. But this is this is a course made for Formula 5000s, really. That, it's a because it's big and fast. We do a 115 plus mile an hour average lap, and what's there not to like? How long have you had the car, and how is it for maintenance? Made well, you know what man can build, man can rebuild. So uh, maintenance-wise, it's just a it's a it's a fairly simple engine. Gearboxes are Huel and DG 300. That's an available. There are available parts and so forth for that. Um, all the suspension is hand fabricated. My fabricator is around here somewhere. Um, everything, it's all handmade, and we know how to make all this stuff, so there's nothing too, um, uh, too, too difficult. The technology is exactly the same as F1 was in 72 or 3. The only difference really is the engine um, and, and a few other things. Uh, it's, a, it's a formula and uh, everybody had a different idea what would be best. And if you, if you look around the pit here, there aren't two cars that look the same. This is, I think this is a challenging circuit. There's, n n there's nothing that I don't, don't like. The carousel is always a problem because you just don't know when is it going to let go and you're going to spear off into the bushes. Um, I'm, I'm not crazy about that. The kink is challenging, obviously. Um, and you always seem to want to overtake someone when you get there. For, and, and the driver's meeting, you're always warned, don't. So I take their advice. Um, I don't want to paint the wall. Uh, but, you know, through there and down to Canada, it's all nice. The, this is old school courses. And the, like the old school courses around America, all built in the 50s. And they don't have artificial chicanes or they're just natural terrain. The corners are where they naturally are, and for old historic cars, this is a track we want to be on. So, uh, this this is an enjoyable racetrack. We come here and we'll keep coming here because this is where we have fun. <laughs>
I'm a George Fry. The car that we're running in F5000 this weekend is a McLaren M10A. So this uh, was a McLaren from 1969. Uh, the M10 chassis was the same chassis that they used in Formula One. But as you know, the 5000 cars were all running a uh, 5 liter or a 302 cubic inch uh, American power plant. So Fords, Chevys, uh, a few Mopars uh, have been installed in these cars. And um, so this is one of about 13. Uh, and it uh, was initially run by uh, a racer by the name of Sam Posey and then became uh, a car for Essex Racing. Uh, Merle Brennan, uh, Dick Brown, several others raced this car, as we say, in period. So this is when it was truly a competition car uh, in the series. And, you know, this carried it through its, its professional life and then uh, lived on the West Coast, being used in uh, SCCA, Sports Car Club of America, uh, amateur, semi-pro kind of racing into the early 80s. Into the 80s, yeah. And then, and then at that point, like a lot of these old race cars, it wound up in the back of somebody's shop uh, gathering dust and uh, was silenced for many years. Uh, and eventually, these cars all have gone through a rebirth. I think uh, every car has its day uh, and in many forms, many lives. And so now in vintage racing, it's gone through a, a, a restoration for safety and, and uh, back to its racing specs. And so we enjoy running this car. Uh, I've owned this car now for about seven years. And so it's become very familiar in, in driving, and it's like putting on a, a comfortable pair of shoes, uh, something you're familiar with. What tracks do you usually run at? So we are out of Denver, Colorado, um, but I lived in Chicago for six years. So Road America and Wisconsin has a very special place in my heart. I love coming here. I love the people. I love the brats. But what's not to like, right? Uh, so we come here every year if we can. Uh, but the other tracks we run uh, are sometimes in California or Texas, so we'll go to the Laguna Seca or Mazda Raceway track, um, and uh, sometimes down to the uh, uh, Circuit of the Americas, which is uh, in Texas and Austin. And uh, we have some local tracks as well uh, that are owned jointly by a number of car clubs. It's a uh, two-and-a-half-mile circuit that's in Colorado, very close. And so we do our testing there, and we have some racing there as well. But cars like this are really meant for these big, long, high-horsepower tracks. That's really where they excel, and that's where they're an awful lot of fun. Uh, do you have many maintenance issues, or how easy is it to keep going? That's kind of a loaded question, I suppose. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, these, uh, these cars are now 50 years old, and... Every race car has maintenance issues, um, even new ones. They have maintenance schedules, if nothing else. But certainly these old cars, you, you have to always be aware that the engine technology today is far greater than when they ran in period. The tire technology is better than when they ran in period. So these car, a lot more is being asked of these cars, even with an amateur driver like me. Uh, we're probably pushing these cars from a structural standpoint to a far greater degree than when they were new. So we have to keep all that in mind. We have to renew uh, the, the elements of the car that are under constant stress, so the suspension pieces and so forth. And, um, you know, the parts become more and more hard to find, and we have to fabricate a lot of these ourselves. So uh, not just anybody can work on these. It has to be somebody who really understands that and treats it accordingly while at the same time keeping the car authentic. You know, not getting uh, too ahead of yourself and start putting carbon fiber and other new technologies on these cars that really just don't belong there. Uh, it sure, sure is fun to see these cars run again, and I thank you very much for bringing it. Absolutely, thank you, and uh, thanks for supporting uh, Vintage Racing.
Our second place finisher is out of the car. Let's go ahead and talk to him real quick. How was the run? The run was great. Track was uh, fantastic. Sun was shining. Perfect day. Outstanding. Nice to be in here. All right, guys, grab some water, grab some towels. This gentleman's standing over here ready to give you some. Probably needs to walk right up to you. That'd be good. Third place. Tell us about the run. Ah, first time on a podium ever! <laughs> Great job. What was the best part about being out on the track? Uh, being out there with all my uh, historic Trans Am friends. Uh, we go all over the country doing this, and it truly is the best group in vintage historic racing. Outstanding. Thank you so much for being here. You're third place finisher. All right, let's talk to Bill. First place finisher. Congratulations, Bill. Beautiful car. Tell us about the day. Thank you. It was a great day, and we really appreciate everybody here in Road America. The hot sun is now out and shining. It's perfect timing for our historic Trans Am podium. Bill's going to take the top step. Talked by Carmen. Followed by Drew. So, again, guys, look straight ahead. We got some photographers. We got some television cameras. Big smiles. Get those hands in the air at your Trans Am podium for the WeatherTech International Challenge with Brian Redmond, presented by Hawk Performance. Congratulations, everyone. Champagne is out. Drink it, spray it, blow it, throw it, however you want to do it. Victory Lane, we've got our winner 101, Craig Bennett, 101X, Kurt Bennett, number 89, Warren Riggs, Craig Bennett coming in with that beautiful UOP shadow, gorgeous car. You're right into town. Congratulations, Craig. Wonderful with champagne all over. I tell you what, those beautiful cars. We're so glad to see these guys out here. Congratulations again, gentlemen. Thank you so much. I'm Dan Davis, Historic Can Am Association and Victory Lane. Everybody, every single Can Am car is a winner. Big, big hand for every single driver in this group. They really drove a great race. Now, we'll especially honor our class winners. Frank Bennett, you're a double winner. You got a big block in that car and you get the big block award. Congratulations. Thank you, Dan. I really appreciate it. Fine job again assembling a, a nice group of cars. I look forward to next year. Two small block. Robert Ryan up here. And Robert, with a small block, you, you finished very high. Great job. Thank you, Dan. Great day. Great day for Can Am and you. Yeah, it was good, good race, good scenery. And somebody brought the sunshine. That's right. All right, class C3, which is our FIA cars that, of course, also ran the Can Am. Michael Moss. Where's Michael Moss? Michael, congratulations. A wonderful drive. I thought you might get even on a podium there for a minute. <laughs> well, thank you guys, and uh, thank you for my uh, great crew chief and uh, his best helper, Avery, and uh, what a great 
great day. What a great weekend. Thank you, everybody. All right, and now we have our uh, traditional early cars that represent part the early years in the Can-Am. And our two-frame winner, Tom Simpson in a McKee. Tom, you're a repeat winner. You always put on a good show. Well, I try hard. Are you here? I know you were going to run another race right after this. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dan, for pulling this together with the KM. Really appreciate that. Thanks to America for bringing the sun out. It's a great group of winners. Big hand for our class winners. Now, we do have some very special awards, which are, you guys stay up here, we're going to do our special awards, and our, uh, two of our very long-term awards that always honor those that have given something special to what we do. So, uh, the spirit of KM. Well, we're going we're gonna to start with the Denny Hume Cup. Uh, Denny Hume was racing with us here in our first 92 year. This is for the individual that has helped the association all year long. And I'm pleased to award it to ACD Augustine. Wow, 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 wow. That's a example of someone that is entering all of our races all year long and and helps us create great grid. Okay, and our, our next winner, uh, this is the can -Am Celebration Cup to the driver of the weekend who has exhibited the true spirit of Can-Am and a, an individual that has done extraordinary perseverance in getting here, Warren Briggs of England. Privilege. Wow. I'm just on it. Well, you've earned it. You, you came. Uh, we've been working together to get you here for six months, I believe. You even had to change the body on the car to be eligible because it had the wrong body and so forth. And uh, just getting here was a great effort. And I know you're going on to run the next Can Am at Laguna, so you'll you'll enjoy holding this for a, for a few months before you go back to England. I certainly will, Ian. A great, great group of drivers. Thank you all, and a big round of to all our winners.